Starfleet, though not solely a military organisation, has created a large number of weapons for use in all sorts of situations. Most of the time they stick with the phaser as a sidearm for its versatility, but there is a long list of weaknesses that can render a phaser less than ideal. In some situations, and radiations, a phaser cannot operate, likely due to some effect on the nadion particles used exclusively by the gadget. What's worse is that in combat situations, a dampening field can be created. This term is used as a blanket name for any artificial energy field that interferes and scrambles many sensitive technologies. They have different causes, but can prevent transporters from getting a lock, nullify comm signals, and yes, shut off energy weapons. So, especially during the Dominion War, Starfleet decided that it needed a practical fix for soldiers deployed in such environments. One such solution was the TR-116 rifle. Developed by Starfleet Security throughout the 2370s, this futuristic bit of gear drew inspiration from an older time. It actually fired a solid projectile. Neither a particle stream nor an energy blaster. It wasn't a psychic feedback rock. It was simply a rifle. It worked by creating a chemical explosion in a contained chamber, which then launched a tritanium round from the barrel. The propellant is unknown, but probably something more effective than gunpowder. The required force and relative simplicity of the design necessitated a larger weapon around the size of a Type 3 phaser rifle. After all, this device was supposed to be able to operate on opponents wearing futuristic body armour, like the Jem'Hadar. Tritanium was 21.4 times as hard as diamond, and often used as an alloy in the outer bulkheads of starships. The weapon worked as intended, but Starfleet chose not to pursue the design, instead to remain ever faithful to their Nadion-based phaser love, and opted for a regenerative phaser that could supposedly adapt to dampening effects. The project was shelved. In 2375, a psychologically unwell Vulcan called Tulak increased the potential for this weapon by adding a microtransporter to the barrel and sinking it with a targeting visor that could be used to view through walls. On firing, the microtransporter would kick in and beam the projectile from the muzzle to the target destination, around 9cm from the target. Somehow the kinetic motion of the Tritanium round was preserved, and the projectile continued on its intended path, effectively bypassing any physical objects in between. Crazy Vulcans will never cease to be scary. So, in short, the rifle itself was fairly unimpressive, just an advanced version of a 21st century design. But with some 24th century adaptation, suddenly a whole new dynamic to warfare is introduced. It is likely that the Federation would consider such a weapon inhumane and reserve it for the most dire and necessary circumstances, but the option is now there. In plot lines and tales beyond the shows, the TR-116 saw implementation into Starship arsenals in its microtransporter enhanced state, but was used as a specialised tool rather than a standard sidearm. In 2409 Star Trek Online, the creation of personal shielding – think form-fitting force fields – seemed to present a whole new defensive option for many races. The TR-116 was brought back into production, developed some more, and resulted in the TR-16A and B. The weapon was designed to be able to beam its round past the shielding of an individual in much the same way it bypasses matter. The thing is, surely the inclusion of a microtransporter undoes the possibility of using it in a dampening field once again. I suppose at that point you could just detach the modifications and use it as originally intended. Or as a club. But that's about everything about the TR-116. It was a weapon created to defend the Federation in changing and unpredictable environments, and put aside for a more advanced option. It took the machinations of a serial killer to turn the device into something unique, and that's kind of messed up, but there's no denying that it has the potential to reshape ground skirmishes as Starfleet knows them. I mean, a sniper that doesn't even need line of sight? Scary. 
Thanks for listening to this mini lore bite video. I need a name for them. What do you think of the TR116? A cool idea in universe, or kind of wish it had never been discovered? Made for an interesting episode of DS9 to be sure, but much like the hyperspace ramming from Star Wars, it has the potential to really shift how battles are fought. Thanks again, and goodbye.